Welcome back to another episode of Big Sticks, guys. Today, I know, I know, I know what you're gonna say. Didn't you just do a Meet My New Kayak video? And you're absolutely right. I did so about three weeks ago. And what happened with that Pelican is, while it's a great fishing platform, it's great for out on the lakes, it is not for choppy, swelly, or current-filled waters. I took that bad boy out there to Pacifica. I tell you, at no time did I feel did I feel threatened or like I was going to lose my life. But what I didn't feel was in control. That one trip alone told me everything I needed to know about that kayak. I told myself, you know what? I can't cheat my way into this game, especially if I want to fish out in the ocean. So I sold it two days later for $1,800 and I turned around and bought something I know is proven. This one here is the Hobie Compass. It's a 2020, it's the camo edition. So it comes with the Mirage 180 uh, turbo with kick up fins. So let me take you for a walk around it. And we're also going to do some modifications here tonight, so stick with me, folks. It's about to get dirty. All right, so I'm going to get started right here at the bow. I'm already, you know, I'm really, really digging the colors. Um, as some of you guys know, I'm a former Marine, and I love anything camo. And I particularly love desert camo. I love the coyote color, the black, with the, you know, with the white. I think that is just an awesome color scheme. I've already discovered one thing that I really didn't like. Now, I, I got this kayak and I was just so excited to get it that I took off with it. And when I got home and set it up, I realized that, you know, they tell you in the little startup video not to hook the, the strap up here unless you're gonna use it as a beach chair. Now it's supposed to fit in this little eyelet right here. And what you'll see here, you know, I've already had to make a modification to it. Um, something that, you know, I, I feel like I shouldn't have to do when you pay this much for a kayak. To extend the strap, because this is already fully extended, I can't feed this back through the clasp here because it's stitched together. It's so thick it won't go back through. So in order to extend it and have my seat sitting upright, I had to add... Um, you know, about four inches worth of uh, paracord here in order to make that happen. I don't know, let me know if I'm tripping or not, but I'm one of the thought, especially because I've always wanted a Hobie and it's always kind of been just outside of my price range uh, until now, that if you pay this much for a kayak, it should come perfect. Let me know in the comments section below if I'm tripping. I like the fact that it has molded in um, rod holders and they're a little bit wider um, than than the uh, the flush mounts that are plastic that you find on other kayaks. That's one of the things about the Pelican that I could not stand is that when I put a larger rod in those holes, uh, it would the weight of it would bend it up and it would create a hole uh, exposing the underlying hole uh, of the flush mount, allowing a, a, a means for water to get in. That sort of bugged me. One other thing that I'm not particularly fond of is um, these handles here. Uh, I love the fact that this, this kayak here is 68 pounds fitted, which is exactly what the weight was on that, on that Pelican, which I found worked out great for me. But helping my cousin Anthony move his Outback let me know that that is not the boat that I want. That thing was like 120 pounds, probably 200 fully loaded with his equipment. And dragging it across the beach in Pacifica was no joke. 
and I don't want to have to go through that. So um, I wish that this would have came with like a pro angler or outback style um, bar back here to, to make it easier to gain leverage on it, to make carrying this thing easier. I don't know, maybe it's something I'll work on uh, in the future, but for now, that's just what it's gonna have to be. I like the fact that um, this thing is fully modifiable. So what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna take this round hatch here out um, and I'm gonna put it up here. Uh, where they interestingly enough have a circular hatch pattern which seems to uh, work exactly with this. And I'm gonna install a, uh, a rectangle hatch here. Here is that Mirage 180 uh, turbo with the kick up fins. Now this, you will notice here, I got this and I damn near went off on the guy at Kayak City about why they were trying to give me some a used drive. And it, if you look at it, it looks kind of used, it looks kind of dirty, but the guy assured me that this is a brand new drive and this is the style that comes with the camo edition. That's supposedly their camo uh, foot, foot grip uh, stuff on the drive. So what I'm gonna do here in just a moment is I'm gonna finish up the wiring um, to, this, to this fish finder. You'll see here that I've already started uh, with the transducer wiring. So there's an, an interesting little mod that I did that you know I got from a video on YouTube. I think the channel was Kayak Fishing Addict and he had a modification for the Garmin Striker Fork transducer that works with the Lowrance Ready uh, transducer guard on the bottom. And here's what he used. He used these two hole straps, uh, half inch, uh, comes in a bag of five, you only need two of them. Um, and the bolts that the transducer comes with and the bolts that the Lowrance Ready uh, install kit comes with. And as you can see, it really was $1.18. Now that other $1.28 was uh, some bolts that I used to to fix the uh, fix the base plate to this ram mount. So all in all, I spent two dollars and forty six cents just to install the um, the transducer and the fish finder. No pressure putting fresh holes in a brand new Hobie. <laughs> so I'm just. Um, there's two pilot holes uh, right here and right here where the map pocket goes that Hobie's already pre-drilled so I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna work around right around here uh, where I want my my wires to come out Transducer wire through here, and I need to feed the power wire through here. Little gasket, little stem through there. Because these are two different sizes, I needed to find one that fits both. And it comes with the it comes with the kit, so don't worry about finding these grommets. That have the right size ones. And we're just gonna push that up. Alright. That looks pretty good there. So I'm gonna go with about a medium clutch here. I don't wanna, well, I think I only wanna go about halfway on this. I believe they say these are self-tapping screws. We'll find out.
got it started. Let's come back with a screwdriver. Next on the list is removing this. Round hatch. I will say this. One thing I'm noticing about the floor of this Hobie is there is more floor flex in this than there is in a lifetime Tamarack Angler. That is not what I expected from a Hobie. Uh, the gasket still looks usable. All right, so this is what we're gonna put on there. The Hobie rectangle hatch. This should firm up the, uh, firm up the floor a little bit because this thing is pretty heavy. This thing feels really, really hard. Yeah, that's really heavy duty. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I need to match up those holes and trace the inside. Um, again, no pressure. Cutting into a brand new Hobie, right? Is that the right line? God, I don't know. You know what they say, right? Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> I definitely think that I, I, I was about to make too big of a cut. And so I'd rather go small and have room to correct than go too big and not. So this is gonna have to be it. That's straight. I hope that's straight. All right, wish me luck. <laughs> I'm using like this 1980 something Craftsman. Lord knows I haven't used a jigsaw in a while. This thing probably could use some oil too. That's it. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Some scurry shit, y'all. Oh, Lord, please let it be. Is this going to pop in? Yes. Yes, it is. So here's something to note with Hobie that some parts of the floor are uneven in thickness. Like some is way thinner than others. Like this is thicker, this is super thin. All right. All right, so here's a little trick uh, to make sure that these holes line up. Um, I just put a, I put a light in there. I figure if I can see the light, the hole is lined up. We should be pretty pretty much aligned here. Of 
kudos to my pops uh, for always encouraging me to be handy, uh, you know, working on cars, doing all kinds of things. You just don't see that from folks anymore, really. I'm actually happy that I know how to do these things. Otherwise, I'll probably be paying, I don't know, an extra five, $600 for these installs. Wow, that added a whole lot more rigidity to the uh, to the hull or the deck, I should say. I actually like that. Beautiful. Same deal here. I just need to make sure that wherever I set this, it's even. I mean, considering the mold seems slightly uneven, but it's gonna have to work. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Let's see if you fit in here. You do, okay. Oh my God, thank you, Lord Jesus. Next on the list is gonna be the Hobie mesh map, map pockets. These are hookless, made out of silicone of some sort. So, as I said before, they have these pre-drilled uh, holes there already. I'm gonna go with about a medium clutch. I'll start this about halfway. Finish them off by hand. I got a great place to put my wires from the fish finder to just store it in here. But I also got a cool place to put my, my fish grips. Next up, we have the Hobie bolt-on rail, or H-rail. This is the nine inch kit, comes with the mounting hardware, and we're gonna put it right here. So I want to also have something to grab onto, but I also want this to have a, at least a serviceable part of the rail that I could use uh, to perhaps hold my my rod holder to come up to about, I don't know, about here. Uh, and the rod come out over, over the top. So I gotta kinda mount it 
a little closer to to the H tracks and run right along the side here, but also give me a handle to hold on to uh, when I'm pedaling. I don't know, for some reason I, I, I feel a little bit better when, when I have something to hold on to. Just mark those up there. But I also realized that if I mount it back here, it might be more difficult for me to reach through this hatch and be able to get a washer back a little bit further uh, to support this, this H rail. So I'm going with a 730 seconds. Give me a little bit of play here. and the nylock nut. So here it is, map pocket, H rail installed. Got a map pocket on this side. Put the uh, rectangle hatch in the center. Put that eight inch ha hatch up front. I managed to find this on Craigslist from a guy Lives right down the street from me, brand new storage case. Of course, these are sold out nationwide. I'm still waiting for the deep bucket for this and the rectangle storage for that. In here, I've connected my Nakwa battery to my, my Garmin fish finder here. And that's what I've done to make this piece here fully fishable for me. Nice and lightweight for levee launches and beach launches because I'm kind of a small guy, but I really don't want to be lifting a lot of weight. And there ain't nothing to it but to do it, folks. All you've got to do is get over your fear of putting a hole in a brand new Hobie, and trust me, I know it's scary as all get out. But again, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. Just make sure you do one thing. That's read the instructions, measure twice, and cut once, and you should be good to go. So until next time, folks, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Big Sticks out. Yeah.